Ma'am, thank you very much for speaking with the firm CNBC TV18. We saw an, un an announcement on Sunday by the G20 who have committed to automatic exchange of information by 2017. Yes. What does this mean? Uh, well, uh, the G20 leaders actually in 2013 and in St. Petersburg uh, at their summit had uh, announced that they would be doing automatic exchange of information and they asked the OECD to work with G20 countries to develop what they call a, a standard which could be applicable worldwide to all countries. They also called on financial centers to uh, also commit to this new standard. And uh, so over this year, in 2014, the OECD working with G20 countries actually developed that common reporting standard, what is called, and uh, they also developed a commentary and they delivered it to the G20 finance ministers. So on receipt of that standard, the finance minister welcomed it, endorsed it, and they also announced that they will start exchanging information uh, automatically uh, by 2017 or by 2018. And they called on other financial centers to actually also implement this new standard. Okay, and de jargonize for this uh, a little bit for me, this automatic exchange of information, what does it work? So today, um, I think specific requests were being made that here is Mr. X and I think that there is something that he's hiding. Right. So Mr. Uh, XYZ Bank, can you give me his information? Yes. Now will this XYZ Bank come to me and I won't have to go uh, fetching for information? Does this automatic exchange of information mean that? Yes, you're right, very right. Uh, uh, automatic exchange has been happening amongst countries even before, you know, in different kinds of income, like in the European Union, uh, it's a savings income, which is called the interest income, they've been exchanging automatically. Sometimes government just, you know, sends CDs to their counterparts saying, okay, I found this information about residents of your countries, I think these people are taxable in your country and we will give you. So that's, that's, that's been happening sporadically. Uh, also, as you mentioned, there's exchange of information on request, which has been going on where in, a specific, in the case of a specific taxpayer, uh, a government would ask the other government to get that information because that particular taxpayer may be under investigation and ask for specific information to be provided. Now what is going to happen is that the banks and financial institutions are required to look through their account holders and identify account holders which are residents of other countries and uh, with whom this country has a treaty and uh, they will uh, identify these account holders, collect information, uh, which includes account balance, which includes uh, income coming into that account, including interest, dividends, any insurance proceeds, etc. They will collect that information, they will segregate it based on country and provide that information to, the, to their own government. And that government then will separate it based on different countries and pass it along to the other country. That country will receive the information, it will look at its own uh, return filing processes, try to match that information, whether it's you know, or use it, yeah, or, or they will use it for risk assessment or identifying uh, risky cases to investigate and audit further. So in that sense, the information is coming automatically on an annual basis, and it is coming in a standardized format without making any requests. Okay, so apparently India has made this big breakthrough with Switzerland which the media has been sort of uh, headlining over the past uh, 48 hours. Yes, yes. What is it that we have achieved in this process and the millions and billions of dollars apparently that is in black money that has been hiding or being stashed away in Switzerland? Mm -hmm. uh, the breakthrough, does it mean anything of bringing that black money back to India? Well, uh, Switzerland has recently announced that it will also start exchanging information automatically uh, starting from 2018. It has also given uh, its what you call uh, priority negotiations that it will negotiate with the EU uh, and with countries with whom they have uh, trade uh, relations or economic relations and also um, countries which may have what they call regular regularization procedures which is probably means amnesty. And uh, in that context, I understand uh, that India has been talking to Switzerland and saying that uh, we should also have be on the priority or we should do an agreement quickly. And uh, from what I read in the media, there is, uh, there is some forward movement there, with, which seems that, uh, that, that there is there positive talks that, uh, that they will probably be talking about an agreement with each other soon. And uh, of course, that, that means that uh, India would, if once this agreement is done and information starts flowing, it obviously means that people who are hiding money in Switzerland uh, uh, should not be doing so, if they're still doing, but they should not be doing so. But, uh, but I think uh, in all, it's a very positive development. And uh, I think it, it, it So is there a sort of, uh, if I can use the word because it's fashionable nowadays to use it, uh, that this will apply to retrospective income or funds that have been parked in Switzerland? 
Well, uh, what I would say is that what the standard requires will be that the country, for example, Switzerland, will identify the accounts in its banks on a particular date. Maybe, say, for example, in, in, in 2017, the 1st January of a particular year, it will look through the banks and financial institutions will look through the accounts and they will look to see which accounts relate to country A, B, C, including India, and then they will segregate it and provide it. So in that sense, it's, it's accounts on a particular date. Okay. You know, they're not obliged to go back and go back 10 years and start uh, digging for uh, details uh, you know, of, of the past. So if my money is stashed in Switzerland, I have time till 2017 to get it back or get it out of Switzerland? Well, for all you know, India might already be requesting information about existing accounts, so, so I wouldn't advise but that. But apparently we weren't getting it, is that so? I think what they were not getting was in, in, with regard to a certain category of cases okay. and I also understand from the news reports that there have been some talks regarding that and some progress regarding that. What is the category of cases? What do you mean by that? I think the cases that were being uh, talked or discussed were some cases were about uh, account holders where a CD was stolen uh, from, from a bank by a particular employee. I think there were okay. difficulties with that regard. Okay, okay. okay. We have, uh, India has signed over the past several years a lot of tax information uh, exchange agreements, uh, what do that enable India? Help me with the before and after picture that uh, is it sort of linked into this uh, grand plan of getting everybody to exchange information automatically and where does that fit in with India's uh, agreements that we've been signing with countries? Well, uh, one can exchange information with the different countries and jurisdictions either through a double taxation avoidance agreement or through what is called a specific tax information exchange agreement or what is the multilateral uh, mutual administrative assistance agreement. So there are, there's a multilateral instrument, there is a bilateral instrument only for exchange and there is a bilateral DTC which contains an article for exchanging information. So where India has had double taxation avoidance agreements, it's, uh, it's, it's able to exchange agreement under that. And with certain countries which don't have tax systems uh, uh, or don't have taxation on their own or smaller financial centers, uh, they have been doing tax information exchange agreements where they, it, it provides for exchanging information. And so what all this does is that it enables India to ask for information and, and it's, India has been expanding its network of uh, re exchange relationships, we call them, and uh, which enables India to get that information, ask for that information. In the past it wasn't possible because there were no agreements in place to do that, there was no legal framework. So now there's a legal framework to do that. As far as how it fits into with automatic exchange of information is concerned, some of these agreements, including the double taxation avoidance agreements and the multilateral uh, agreement, they also provide for automatic exchange of information. So, so, so far as India has these agreements in place, automatically also India will be able to, will have a legal basis to do so. Okay. There are some steps to be taken to operationalize that, including signing a competent authority agreement and then, you know, doing some procedures to ensure confidentiality of information. And that's when the actual switch for exchanges starts. Okay, but we have an existing treaty with Cyprus and Cyprus was again in news and I think for the first time India notified a jurisdiction as a jurisdiction which was not willing to share information. Uh, so what did we not have in the, those agreement with uh, some of these jurisdictions like Cyprus that we are trying to renegotiate that now? Well, with Cyprus, India did have an agreement which had a, a clause for exchanging information and uh, India had, I understand, made requests and Cyprus was not able to effectively exchange information under, under, under that agreement. And so this was the case with Cyprus with some other countries as well. And uh, based on the input that we got from different peers, Cyprus was evaluated in its peer review as being non-compliant with the standard. So, so a recommendation was made, many recommendations have been made to Cyprus to fix either their laws or their practices to make sure whoever is asking for information or making valid requests should get that information. I think the, the, the agreement that India is trying to uh, renegotiate with Cyprus is probably with regard to other clauses and uh, so that's an ongoing process. And, uh, but yes, uh, with regard to exchange of information, there was a problem uh, with Cyprus's practices and that was identified in the report. So are we trying to fix it, uh, are we, are, is Cyprus trying to fix it or and what will India do until that, that happens? Well Cyprus I understand would expectedly I'd, I'd be trying to fix that. All Global Forum members who get recommendations are expected to fix the, the, the problems that they have and then come back and report back to the Global Forum uh, demonstrating what changes they've made and uh, hopefully once those changes are made then uh, information will flow in a better manner. Okay, my last question then sir, uh, then ma'am. Uh, 
where does this tax information exchange agreement or automatic exchange agreement process that you are doing at the OECD fit in with the base erosion and profit shifting uh, grant plan uh, that is one and two what is it uh, that we are likely to see in the next couple of years that will help India's uh, sort of case in getting information from jurisdictions uh, where uh, apparently black money is being stashed. Well, uh, as far as the base erosion and profit shifting project is concerned, there is a component there about transparency also if that is uh, you know, embodied in the country by country reporting and, and also making public uh, rulings by certain jurisdictions. So that element and component is there, but that's an ongoing work that, that, that is progressing and, and, and by 2015, I think the whole BEPS uh, outcomes will be presented, part of which we have been presented to the finance ministers this year. What the Global Forum is doing with exchange of information in, sp in specific is, is with regard to cooperation between jurisdictions to make sure they get all the information that they need to enforce their own tax laws. And uh, if they do find that uh, there is tax evasion going on and, and, and their own laws are being violated, they can punish uh, the taxpayers. If they find that there is no uh, you know, evasion going on and it's perfectly legal, then they have to look at other aspects such as base erosion and profit shifting activities and, 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 and that, that is what they have to look at. So, so, so that said, uh, this, this work, I guess, looking forward in, 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 in the exchange of information aspect, I think what is happening is that last four or five years, a lot of agreements were being done, a lot of what I would say the legal infrastructure was being put in place because of the pressure from the Global Forum. Many countries were also investing in resources, manpower, uh, in, in, uh, in IT systems to make sure they're able to get the information. And now what we see is that the requests are actually happening. The, so the highway was laid out in the last four or five years. So actually movement is happening. More requests are being made. India has increased its uh, outgoing requests. So has many other countries increased. So, so there will be just, you know, there's a, there's a time lag, lag between the information coming. You are using it in your investigations and, you know, taking action against it. But all that is happening at a very fast pace. The highway is there. The traffic has started moving. Okay. And with automatic exchange of information, of course, there's a whole another stream of traffic that will start coming and, 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 and I think a lot of uh, changes will happen. Okay, one last question ma'am. This might be oversimplification of uh, the FATCA rules that US has, has put out and US is expecting every other jurisdiction where its residents uh, deal with or have business uh, in to give them the information and this is parallel to what you know what is happening at a global level. Um, is it sort of in harmony with the with with what the OECD is doing? or this is going much beyond that? Well, the US started out with their FATCA uh, regulations, which became the catalyst for uh, the global, you know, common reporting standard. Now there are, uh, the, which the OECD and the G20 countries started developing, you know, uh, after what FATCA came uh, about. Uh, in that context, there are certain differences between FATCA and the common reporting standard. Uh, some of them are relating to the fact that FATCA is based on a U.S. citizenship and, and CRS or the common reporting standard is based on residency and uh, so there are some other differences. So the FATCA regime will continue to operate and this is also a parallel regime which uh, other countries will, will, will use to exchange information. It is hoped that going forward these will converge at some point. And when and how, I, it's, it's hard to say at the moment, but I think uh, the objective is to have one common uh, you know, standard for automatic exchange of information, which means everybody has to look for the same kind of information, everybody has to look at it in the same format and, and exchange it in the same way so that the costs on the banks and financial institutions are very low. And, and of course, there's a level playing field that uh, no one jurisdiction has more advantage by you know, implementing different rules than somebody else. So, so that's the objective and I think that's what we're working towards. All right, ma'am. Good luck to your uh, sort of project at the OECD. Thank you, Thank you Thank very you. much for speaking to CNBC TV 18. Thank you very much.